welcome to Jesus Christ for Muslims. The question that people sometimes ask is, why, does, why do Christians believe in the concept of the Trinity? The idea of that God is three persons in one. They say, that makes no sense. Make your mind up. Is God three people or is he one person? Christians, of course, reply, God is one, but he's also three. And that leaves them very confused. So let's see if we can deal with the confusion. Firstly, let's understand something about God. God being God can be whoever he chooses to be. So the question is, if he is a trinity, why is he organized in that way? There has to be a rational reason. And I believe there is. We need to understand firstly the purpose of God. God, let's agree, is creator. And I'll speak in a later talk about why I believe God is indeed the creator. If God is the creator, then it begs the question, why has he created all of this? Why do we exist? And the Bible is very clear. The Bible says that we exist so that we can be his people and he can be our God. Before creation, there was just God. He dwelt alone, if you like. And then, now, God is in the process of creating a community of persons, God and his people. And that community, like all communities, is brought together by love. A love which is God's idea, God's initiation, and which we learn from God about. Indeed, to answer the question, what is love? That in itself is a very big question. And it's actually God who's taught us the answer to that question. To be godly is to be a person who loves. Because, as the Apostle John taught us, God is love. Love is what a person does in regard to the pe people around him. And God has shown his love for us. Now, how has he done that? He's done it uh, by revealing himself. Now, God is, we think of God as not having a body. Indeed, God the Father, as Jesus called him, clearly doesn't have a body. He has no limitation, no boundary. He is infinite. He is omniscient, omnipresent. Uh, so how can we as human beings in some way apprehend God, in some way understand Him? Surely He is too big for our minds. And so God has represented Himself to us in the form that we can appreciate in the form of somebody who can communicate to us, a human being. And so we have the second person of the Trinity, Jesus, the Messiah. If you want to know what God is like, look at Jesus. Without Jesus, very often we say we believe in God, but actually we don't know what we mean by the word. Um, put five people in five different rooms and ask them the same question, who is God and what's he like? You may well find five different answers. Does that mean there is no God? No, not at all. It's just that they don't yet know him very well. How are we going to get to know God? Well, we need to listen very carefully to what he has said about himself. And the way he has said it is through Jesus, who is clearly indicated in both Old and New Testaments as being one who is divine. He is the Messiah, the one promised, the one who is anointed. He is anointed because he is anointed to rule, the one who has the right to rule heaven and the earth. And the Bible says of him that it was through him that all things have been created. 
Indeed, the Bible also says of him that he was um, slain or crucified from before the foundation of the earth. Creation anticipated the death and resurrection of Christ because without Christ we have no meaning. With Christ we have all the meaning we ever need. So what about the third person of the Trinity? How has God, why has God organized himself into a, a third person? A person that the Bible calls the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not a force. The Holy Spirit is not some vague entity, although the original word is, is for spirit is the same as the word breath or wind. And that's because you don't see him. The Holy Spirit is definitely not uh, corporeal, not in a body. So what is it that distinguishes the Holy Spirit from God the Father? Well, it's very clear that the Holy Spirit, when it's referred to, when it, he is referred to in the Bible, it is um, the Spirit of God coming upon or within a man so that God dwells within the person. Um, it is like, imagine a radio control plane. It's a rather poor analogy, but it's the best I can think of at the moment. You have a radio control plane, and in that plane there is a receiver. And on the ground there is a man with a transmitter, and he's sending signals to the plane turn left, turn right, go up, go down. And the plane responds obediently to those signals. Now, what is happening? Information is being passed from the transmitter to the person. Now, the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit dwells within a person, God has come to take up residence. Effectively, the person has become a temple for the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, knows the mind of God. And so the person is informed about what God wants. I know many times in my own life and the life of my Christian friends where they have very distinctly been told to do this or do that by God and they've obeyed him. And the result has been sometimes the transformation of someone else's life in obedience to what God has told them. Jesus says that um, God will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him and that he will dwell within us. So we have God around us, Jesus beside us and the Holy Spirit within us. So we can say that God has organized himself in these three ways in order to be the best possible God for us he could ever be. The God who is the mysterious creator, the God who has revealed himself in a way that we can appreciate God as man, Jesus the Messiah, and the God who is our most intimate companion, not even one who dwells alongside us, but one who dwells within us. And God has exalted us to be a temple within which he dwells. So we have a picture of the most extraordinary interrelationship. We dwell within God, God dwells within us, and Jesus is beside us and leads us. And in this way, God becomes our complete satisfaction. God loves us more than anyone else could. So God has organized himself for one reason, to love us. And God asks of us in return to love him. In fact, more than that, God asks us to love God with our heart, with our soul, with our mind and our strength. Why does he ask that of us? Because you know, that's exactly what he's done for each and every one of us. Let's appreciate that and let's respond to that 
and let's do what he said, love him, oh, and love our neighbour as ourselves. God bless you.